In the first wing of the Egyptian Museum in Cairo, close to the Room of the Mummies, one cannot help but be surprised by what you will discover. In a small, inconspicuous display cabinet, an object like no other can be found. Made from a brittle stone known as shisht, it is similar in shape to a wheel or discus. This mysterious and to this day unexplained item has become known among particular circles as the tri-lobed disc. It has perplexed all those who have examined it, especially the select Egyptologists that have had the opportunity to study it at great length. Its discoverer is known as one of the most important Egyptologists of the 20th century, author of a classic volume on Egyptology, Archaic Egypt, that continues to be an important bibliographic reference of study even to this day. While carrying out excavations in 1936 within the archaeological zone of Saqqara, Emery discovered the tomb of Prince Sabu. Among several utensils of varying function, the trilobe disc would be found. Emery's attention was immediately drawn to the object, initially defining it in his reports on the First Dynasty tombs as, quote, a container in the form of schist bowl. Years later, he again commented on the subject with a word that perfectly summarized the reality of the situation, indicating to the discomfort the object was causing, describing it as a kachibachi, a small hole that threatens to become bigger and bigger. It seems Emery, like many others within the same field, retained their success and notoriety by deliberately and publicly denying such artifacts any traction within the public domain. Denying us all a true understanding of Egyptian history, or at least a questioning of the currently upheld teachings. He finished his quotation by stating that, A satisfactory explanation has not yet been obtained on the particular design of this object, or indeed its construction. The accepted and predictably rigid view regarding the introduction of the wheel into ancient Egypt coincided with the invasion of the Hiskos at the end of the Medium Empire in 1640 BC, this date being over a thousand years after the disc's construction. Egyptologist Cyril Alred reached the conclusion that the object was, without a doubt, a copy of a previously much older metallic object. A detail next to the orifice in the center also made him suspect that this object was only a small part of a more complex mechanism and that it was saved thanks to a stone reproduction for unknown reasons made by an artist with unknown tools, and the fact that it demonstrates such a complex design at such a primitive time in ancient Egyptian history suggests its origins may have been far more unusual than modern tenants would have you believe. It is highly possible that this artifact is a fragment of one's highly advanced technologies, which have subsequently been lost over the millennia. Regardless of hypothesis, its true function, history, or indeed construction, its reason for existence remains a mystery to this day. Hey guys, before we discuss the most recent controversial discovery that was made in the Sariarka, a region near the city of Karaganda in Kazakhstan. I feel it is important to note that a possible cover-up has ensued surrounding the finds that have been made. A tomb has been found within what is thought to be the oldest pyramid surviving on Earth. The team of explorers who made the discovery, led by Igor Kukushkin, said that they initially believed that it was likely built for an ancient king or clan leader. However, upon realizing that a burial chamber was resting beneath this once enormous mausoleum and that it was found unopened, it has remained undisturbed for undoubtedly many millennia. Soon after the discovery, local authorities, along with rumors of the involvement of other international organizations, cordoned off the entire excavation, subsequently silencing the archaeologists for nearly a year regarding their remarkable finds, also preventing any further exploration of the ruins being reported. Just how long would it take for a once grand pyramid to virtually erode away? and what sort of things were found within this tomb that would require a year-long cover-up. Information relating to the discovery of the pyramid and the subsequent burial chamber was initially filtered to the press, yet no further information regarding this amazing excavation was made public. After over a year of silence, the team have now claimed that the chamber had somehow been robbed some years earlier, 
conveniently leaving the oldest known pyramidal tomb on Earth empty for all the world to see. Additionally, a large debunking effort has ensued regarding the initial and largely honest conclusions made by many scholars regarding the pyramid's possible age. Many initially concluded that the pyramid actually predated its more well-known neighbors, located more than 6,000 kilometers away in Giza, by more than 1,000 years. Not too long ago when Osiris' tomb was rumored to have been discovered within Gaza, who was said to have been an alien god, a familiar sequence of events were subsequently witnessed shortly after this discovery also. Could there really be a conspiracy currently being undertaken by unknown powers to conceal the existence of ancient astronauts and possible past alien gods? With so many ancient burial chambers linked to incredibly important and lost segments of our vast ancient past, it is difficult to deny the possibility of such a conspiracy actually being played out in front of our very eyes. What do you think regarding the suppression of such finds? Are the accusations of a conspiracy sheer paranoia? Are these operations just protecting the discoveries from possible corruption? Or could there really be aliens buried within the tombs of pyramids that dot the earth? Or possibly even further afield? Thanks for watching, guys, and until next time, take care. It is still largely unknown just how colossal the great city of Ur could have once been. Ur, once the most important Sumerian city-state in ancient Mesopotamia, around 3rd millennium BC, is where the remains of the great ziggurat lay. And just as with the ancient city, only the foundations of this once enormous pyramid still exist today. Just how big this pyramid once was is now left to the imagination, although one could calculate the structure's original possible size based on the ascent angle of many other ancient pyramidal structures from around the world. A range between 48 to 53 degrees would be a very safe benchmark to use, which would have made this once complete structure located on the Daikar province in South Iraq an awe-inspiring sight. Yet what must be the most interesting of details regarding this very ancient structure, characteristics of which make this building stand out as obviously a very important piece of the puzzle regarding the pyramids, has to undoubtedly be the living quarters which were actually built into the pyramid for the use of an ancient alien, a god, who apparently came from the sky. Before delving into the details of which I feel it is important to point out, our previous video covering Mario Bildrip's compelling work, collaborative data which correlates over 500 ancient structures on Earth to past cardinal reference points or North Pole locations from over half a million years ago, interestingly, he singles out the great ziggurat among others, in particular, the Sphinx as noticeably the most ancient of monuments that he has correlated on Earth. If his work becomes peer-reviewed, it would, along with numerous other research projects, strongly suggest certain monuments on Earth have survived several ice ages, the city of Ur's pyramid being but one of these ancient sites. Regardless of Mario's compelling work, Historical facts surrounding this ancient alien god, who is said to have resided within this great pyramid within Iraq, has already been translated and thus well established on many occasions. The great ziggurat consists of successive platforms which have a solid core of mud brick, which was then covered by burnt bricks. This outer layer is said to have protected the core from the elements. The mainstream archaeological and historical understanding of the construction is that it began under King Ur-Namu of the 3rd dynasty of Ur, around the 21st century BC, and was completed by his son, King Shulgi. The great ziggurat of Ur was located in the temple complex of the city-state, which was the administrative heart of Ur. Although we would postulate, just like the ancient Egyptian cities, which also build up around these monumental and mysterious structures, were merely modern colonizations of sites which were far older. It is a well-known fact that many cities, towns, villages, and indeed temples are often rebuilt, reconstructed upon much older foundations. It is a common mistake to perceive a historical understanding's beginning, which occurred at a certain point within history, as that of the site's creation. Many sites all over the world are far older than that of the academic records made upon said subjects. The great ziggurat of Ur is largely accepted as having been dedicated to the moon god Nana, 
who is the patron deity of the city. It is interesting that Nana is a very ancient deity indeed, and of course, in all possibility, was once a very real entity, an ancient alien who visited Earth and attributed as a god. It is likely that this occurred at night, thus making him or her a moon god. Why, for example, would you create a monumentally sized building in the dedication of this god, with a throne which rested upon the top overlooking the city? Why would one feel the requirement to build living quarters into the temple, a bedchamber complete with furnishing? Why would one completely build the structure around the living need of an imaginary giant, if one was never intending on using it? Nana has turned up in mythology from cultures throughout the world over the ages. And this, of course, may have been for good reason. She also appears in Norse mythology in the 6th century, thus having been connected by some scholars with the Sumerian goddess Inanna, the goddess Babylonian Ishtar, or the Phrygian goddess Nana, mother of the god Attis. Scholar Rudolf Simek opines that identification with Inanna, Nanar, or Nana is hardly likely due to the large distances in time and location between the figures. Yet, alas, this form of conclusion, based on academic paradigm rather than a sheer possibility, is a very dangerous mindset indeed. Scholar Hilda Ellis Davidson says that while the idea of a link with Sumerian Inanna, Lady of Heaven, was attractive to early scholars, the notion seems unlikely. Though she too lacks a compelling argument for her conclusion, we find the notion of scholars, assuming, to be a dangerous scenario for the rest of humanity, and we perceive such attitude as an attack on open critical thought. We do, however, find the facts surrounding the possible past existence of Nana, along with the theories surrounding the true antiquity of this one enormous structure, to be highly compelling. Why did we never go back to the moon? Undoubtedly, man's greatest achievement a feat which has apparently never been attempted again. There are many conspiracy theories surrounding the moon missions, some for good reasons and others not so. A mission to the moon, or indeed Mars, should be an experience which unites humanity under a common goal. Yet, alas, this unity rarely occurs. It is a well-known fact that knowledge is power, yet unfortunately this fact can often breed deceit and deception for it is believed by some that knowledge only makes one powerful when it is concealed from another, regardless of whether this always be accurate within reality. Because of this system of accumulating and protecting power, space-going nations have gone to tremendous efforts to conceal things from the public, and indeed each other. The United States government, for example, demands astronomers, astronauts, and many other workers at NASA sign an oath of confidentiality. Upon breaking this oath, you could face a conviction of treason, a crime which carries the death penalty. However, regardless of this, over the past few years, more and more individuals from around the world have bravely began to blow the whistle on these secrecies. Dr. Ken Johnston, former director of NASA's Department of Photographic Evidence, has stated that during his stay at the agency, he was able to see original photos of countless ruins, pyramids, and intact temples all resting upon the moon. Not only are there now a number of independent testimonies, made by numerous figures from within these space agencies and the accompanying programs, confessing to the concealment of ancient ruins on the moon's surface, but we also have compelling physical evidence of such structures, including photographs released by NASA themselves. One was snapped by the Apollo 17 astronauts in 1972. Subsequently uploaded to the official NASA website, it was originally labeled as overexposed. However, as technology has evolved and computer software has become more inept at refining images, it has revealed something amazing. Along with apparent pyramidal structure, clearly seen within this image, some investigators have also highlighted a possible monolith in the foreground. Was Space Odyssey trying to tell us something? Predictably, many people have come forward attempting to discredit this discovery. Yet, fortunately for us, in the December of 2008, the Hubble Space Telescope took some extremely intriguing images of its own. Images which seem to corroborate the once overexposed Apollo photo. Do these images actually show ancient ruins upon the surface of the moon? If this is the case, how did they get there? 
or more importantly, who could have built them? Are these relics proof of an ancient space-going civilization? Or maybe extraterrestrial activity? Regardless of how they got there, we find their existence highly compelling and could be perceived as a possible motive for turning the space programs into black projects. Maybe we did go back to the moon. It's just most were never told about it. After all, knowledge is power. Thanks for watching guys, and until next time, take care. Although many individuals who have experienced a comfortable, funded existence regurgitating merely that which their masters permit of them, there exists a vast area of research which these same individuals are commanded to overlook on a daily basis. With truths existing within that are undoubtedly not only perceived as controversial to their currently attested theories, but seen as a direct threat to their highly profitable tales as to the true history of man. Areas of historical interest that, although hidden by mainstream academia, shed light upon a large chapter of human history, one far greater and indeed incredibly more advanced than that which we are currently led to believe, and one such site can be found amongst the ruins of the Wari. It is located near Quinoa, in the Ayacucho region of Peru, at an altitude of nearly 3 kilometers above sea level. Once the capital of the Wari Empire, which ruled the region sometime between 500 to 1000 AD, what one can find here is extraordinarily precise rock-cut features which, predictably, due to their clearly advanced nature, avoid current understanding. These precision-cut andesite blocks, which are notoriously hard and thus difficult to cut, are so masterfully crafted that, according to modern attested academic theory, are currently unexplainable. However, just like the many other as yet unexplained ancient sites within Peru, could these ruins actually predate that which academia claims as to the true origins and indeed age of such sites? Could the Wari, just like the well-studied ancient Incas, have merely rediscovered these astonishing ruins, perhaps left over by a more capable, vastly more ancient civilization, now lost to history? If this were the case, then the clear similarities which have already been established between these rock cuts and indeed the design of these enigmatic stone blocks could easily be explained, due to them originally having been the work of the same civilization. It is undeniable that these stones were not cut with Bronze Age tools, tools which according to the academically claimed creators were the only ones available at the time. Additionally, and intriguingly, according to certain sources, elongated skulls were also discovered amongst the ruins of the site. Could these mysterious remains be a clue as to the original builders of these enigmatic stones, and indeed the ancient ruins found throughout Peru? What do these rocks represent? What were their original purpose? When fitted together, most of these stones would have formed some sort of pipeline, similar to that of the enigmatic patera pipes found in modern-day Turkey, an enigmatic ruin we have previously covered. Could this have been the original purpose for these stones? We feel that for academics to claim that they have positively identified the builders of such sites and continue to explain complete history of the so-called builders, the Wari, yet like the many other inexplicable sites found upon our planet, be incapable of explaining how they built them, is to us clear evidence of conspiracy and an attempt to obscure the true history and indeed advanced capabilities of their builders. It is, undoubtedly, highly compelling.